In California, a famous rock climber is sentenced after using his fame to lure victims to Yosemite to sexually assault them. In Pennsylvania, a man is sentenced in the beating death of his girlfriend just prior to taking a nap. These stories and more coming at you today, Friday, February 16th on Real Life Real Crime Daily, and I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm not Woody Overton. <laughs> no, you're not Woody Overton. Right. Maybe he's uh, maybe he's on his way and will uh, surprise us here in a few minutes, but Jim and I have waited uh, for uh, an hour, and I've lost another two hundred dollars to Jim in various games, and so uh, uh, I decided that we better start recording before I'm broke. There you go. So we, uh, before we get in, we got you got some stuff you wanted to talk about with some. Uh, I guess one of them is kind of a correction. One, I got one correction and one breaking news story that uh, uh, that we didn't plan on covering because it really uh, broke later yesterday and and. Uh, uh, more information's come out on it since. But when we first reported, which would have been in Thursday's episode uh, about the shooting in Houston at the Joel Osteen um, uh, facility, really, uh, yeah. complex, um, we were told that it was a woman with a four- or five-year-old child. And at the time, that the uh, the child was at the hospital and they didn't know the extent of the injuries or who the child was, and it turned out one was her child. Two, the child was nine years old, not four or five, and unfortunately, the child did not make it. And so uh, that is an update on that story and an unfortunate one. The other big breaking news yesterday was what happened in Kansas City at the end of the Super Bowl parade celebrating the Chiefs' victory. Gunfire broke out, and... Uh, Good Samaritans again were the were the key here to this not becoming a bigger tragedy than it is. All we know right now is three people were arrested. Believe there was only one shooter. Possibly there was a second shooter, but as of now, uh, that's what we know. There's one person confirmed uh, dead who was a disc jockey at a radio station there in. Uh, in Kansas City, Lisa Lopez Galvan is her name. Believe it or not, there are 22 other people who were hit by gunfire. Jeez, uh, and 11 of them are said to be children. Uh, That's the, horrible. The good news on that is that uh, Children's Hospital reported that they uh, they expect all of those victims, the, the child victims, I think there was 11 that were child victims, uh, that those victims are all going to recover. So, you know, you amazing know, that uh, that there wasn't more death, uh, but... Really is, and, you know, with these with these parades, you see, obviously, an uptick in, and, of course, we can speak it to this in Louisiana because of the Mardi Gras that we just... We just had, and fortunately, there was no, there were no incidents like this. But anytime you have these parades, there's an uptick in the in the police presence. Uh, but sadly, it's a lot of people in one place, and it gives opportunity to evil people uh, to commit crimes like this. It's yeah, the mayor horrible. said they had 800 officers on duty. Yeah, so I mean, 800 officers. If and, someone's and determined to do that, they're going to do it. It's going to be real hard to stop them. Uh, luckily, uh, those Good Samaritans tackled the guy, and and it wasn't uh, it wasn't worse than uh, yeah, than it is. But man, what you know, what a great day for the city! You're celebrating your second Super Bowl in a row, third in five years, whatever. All of this stuff to to be happy about, and and uh, this happens at the end of it. So I uh, feel very sorry for all those folks in Kansas City. Uh, the only other update I was going to give was the final Super Bowl attendance number came in. So we it? now have the Taylor Swift factor, which was the total uh, audience was 123 million people, which is the highest number ever to have watched a Super Bowl. Last year's Super Bowl was 114 million, which had been the highest prior. So do you attribute that to the Swifties? Or? Nine million Swifties. <laughs> I attribute it to Andy Reid and <laughs> nine million Swifties. Very scary, scary stuff. Anyway, that's your that's your Super Bowl update. Yeah, uh, well, uh, look, 
uptick in uh, uh, the last several years in the Super Bowl, and and um, Swifties are on board. It, it appears, and they're to stay. Well, that's the big question: is now what's the How's the NFL going to pander to those Swifties over the next few years to try to keep that extra audience? (laughs) Because I'm sure uh, both the league and CBS, double whammy, you had a lot more listeners. Yeah. And you got an overtime period. So they made a lot of money. They made a lot of money. All right. Well, as Woody would say, let's get into some true crime time for Freaky Friday. Friday. Yeah. Freaky Friday. And uh, yeah, that's the best Woody Everton impression I got, y'all. But we're going to get take you to California and a professional rock climber known in the California climbing community, very well known, uh, was convicted Tuesday of sexually assaulting a woman in Yosemite National Park in 2016. And that is the first thing that stood out to me. He was just convicted Tuesday from a crime that took place in 2016, but A jury convicted Charles Barrett, 38, of two counts of aggravated sexual abuse and one count of abuse of sexual contact. Barrett used force to have sex with the victim during a weekend. Uh, The charges on which he has been convicted carry up to life in prison, but sentencing guidelines may play a role. Uh, Barrett was indicted in 2022. He was charged with crimes against one woman, but three other women testified at that trial that he also victimized them. Those cases were not criminally charged federally because they did not happen in federal jurisdiction. U.S. Attorney Philip Talbert said Barrett used his fame to lure the victims to the park where he lived and worked at the time. The defendant used his renown and physical presence as a rock climber to lure and intimidate victims who were part of the rock climbing community, and his violent sexual assaults were devastating to the victims, whom he later threatened in the lead up to the trial. That from the district attorney, uh, out, outside magazine, which which is a magazine that focuses on rock climbing, actually. Uh, described Barrett as an extremely prominent member of the North California climbing community. And look, y'all, Northern California, it, there is a huge climbing community there. Uh, it's a big deal. Those guys, those guys that, that are well-known out in that area uh, are rock stars, really, uh, in the world of rock climbing. So the victim went for a weekend of hiking in Yosemite and had messaged Barrett for hiking recommendations. Uh, she ultimately met with him, and Barrett uh, sexually assaulted her three times during that weekend. When she felt like she could safely escape without angering him, she drove home, and the woman reported those sexual assaults to Yosemite officials way back in 2020. Barrett's attorneys, Timothy Hennessy and David Torres, said they do not believe the evidence warded a guilty verdict. Of course, they would. Uh, say that, but they respected the jury's decision. Barrett intends to appeal and believes that evidence can vindicate him. Mr. Barrett knew that he was going in, knew going into this that he was in a long fight to clear his name, but it's a fight he will not give up that from his attorney. So hmm. a good example of someone taking their fame and, and using it for evil uh, in this asshole's, you know, he's going to pay for it and possibly with life in prison. Well, did you, so she said that the incident occurred in 2016, but she didn't go after him until 2020. Looks like she didn't report it. It looks like she reported it to Yosemite uh, officials in 2020. Um, Who knows about the delay? Look, especially with sexual assault, it is very common for there to be year long delays, years long delays. Uh, A lot of these women are humiliated they don't want to be ridiculed. They they are very apprehensive about coming out in public because then you're, you know, even though it is not your fault, maybe you're concerned that somebody might feel like you led somebody on or, or maybe you feel like there's no way to prove it. Well, in this case, this guy was a professional rock climber, had a lot of popularity there. I could see someone being real apprehensive to admit that. And then just over time at building and building and them saying, he's not going to get away with this. Sure. I'm going to talk to our favorite uh, fan of Yosemite, uh, uh, John Ziegler, who does a podcast that both Jim and I work on with him called the death of journalism. 
goes to Yosemite with his family twice a year and is really intimate with everything up there. I wonder what he knows about this story. We'll have to uh, be ask him. because and, and you said the guy lived there? Because I thought— Yeah, he lived and worked there. So he must have uh, worked for the—I ran- I don't want to say the ranger service, but whatever— Organ, whatever park service that they have there, he may, maybe he was a rock climbing teacher. I don't, I don't yeah, maybe because I, I know that there are only a couple of actual hotels inside of the park. I think there's there's two hotels yeah. that are your choices to stay inside. Many people are coming with RVs and they're outside the park in those areas and everything. I don't. Remember, there being a lot of living facilities in there. There is where the the, the park uh, rangers stay, so maybe that's where uh, where he was housed. But yeah. anyway, hey y'all, let me tell you about Gobble. All Gobble meal kits are pre prepped. That means less work for you and less waste in your kitchen. Their meal kits include everything you need, so you can save time at the store or just skip that trip entirely. I got the box in, and I had three different meals. I had a Kung Pao chicken, crispy fish tacos, and a beef boom jignon. However you say it, but let me tell you about the classic beef boom jignon. Look, it came with beef pot roast and a beef broth concentrate, red wine demi glaze, cremini mushrooms, ciapelloni onions, mashed potatoes, baby carrots, and rosemary thyme butter. It was so easy to make. Literally like 15 minutes it took Cindy. And let me tell you something, all the dishes were fire. But this thing was like a taste explosion in my mouth. It's just un real we've got to spend more time together and more time doing the things we love because everything came in this one single box right to my door so see what a difference gobble will make for your household right now they're all for my listeners a fantastic limited time deal you get a hundred and twenty dollars off across four boxes plus free shipping and free cookies. And let me tell you, those cookies, I ate one that was sin-baked, and it was delicious. Go to gobble.com slash real life. That's G-O-B-B-L-E dot com forward slash real life for $120 off your first four boxes. This offer is not available on the home site, so don't miss out. This is genius. It's taste explosions in your mouth like you never had. Hey ladies, are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's in your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through. Premenopause, menopause, and while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is... You don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have Hormone Harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone Harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says... It makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at the checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H A P P Y M A M M O T H dot com and use code R L R C. Oh my gosh, do we have a crazy story out of a little town in Texas? First, I'm going to give a recommendation. The recommendation is for all you listeners out there no matter what you've bought, no matter where you bought it, no matter what you plan to do with it, whether you plan on eating it, hanging it on a wall, or anything else, no matter what it is, thoroughly sterilize it. And here's why. The guy in this story is the reason why. Spring, Texas. There's a man who dressed up in a kilt. By the way, the story was sent by a listener, and I am really sorry. I can't find 
the, uh, I don't know if it was an email, a text, a text message, uh, uh, Facebook messenger, but I couldn't figure out who it was. So, uh, so ping me again so I can give you credit next episode. But, um, in spring, Texas, this guy dressed up in a kilt and went antique shopping. And he has a pretty unique way of examining the items he's interested in while he is antiquing. Before he determines whether he wants to own an item, he first tests the item in the, quote, kilt cage. To be more precise, he slips the item under his kilt and up his butt. What? His method for doing so is quite interesting. He looks a bit like... You know, Patrick Mahomes, when they signal a receiver mm. to go in motion, they'll pick up that leg and, and do that thing. A, a, uh, uh, a TikToker who posted about this guy compared his technique to what a toddler might do, including the facial uh, expressions while they're, you know, taking a dump in a diaper, that face they make and the stance they kind of take while they're, while they're doing that. Because you always know when your kid was taking, right. taking one in the diaper, right? Yeah. You can see this guy take that, like, Patrick Mahomes step and then has that, that kind of face. On Monday, our Kilted Crusader was caught on video camera in multiple Spring, Texas antique shops doing his thing. In one clip, the uh, uh, Charmin Charmin can be seen grabbing what appears to be a spoon off of a display table, taking it in his hand and popping it in while hiding behind a birdcage. This particular piece was not to his liking, apparently, as he quickly popped it out of his kilt. <laughs> And placed it back where he had found it. Like Goldilocks searching for the right temperature porridge, he continued strolling around the establishment looking for that just right fit. Another item caught his eye. He picked it up and looked at it. And then he does that little horsey step and proceeds to kilt cave it. While um, while the butt bandit opted to end his reign of rectal terror after the second instance, he picked up his pastime at other stores a little later in the day. A tidbit the antique store owner discovered after reaching out to similar small businesses in the area. One of those shop owners called her and said, guess who I have on camera? Footage from that shop taken on the same day depicts the rump robber performing his signature horsey stomp before shoving an item into the kilt cave yet again. We will post the TikTok highlighting this guy's antics for all of you to see. The uh, anal annihilator is still out on the loose. We can only hope he doesn't go shopping for power tools next. That was a lot of puns in there. <laughs> yeah, I had a little fun with, uh, yeah, with that one. You did. Florida police are searching for a homeless man who stabbed his friend multiple times with a samurai sword on Monday. All of this happened over an argument about an Xbox gaming console. Uh, <laughs> of course, that yeah, requires a samurai face-off, doesn't it? Yeah, if, uh, every time. And the Daytona Police Department is looking for Walter Grimes. He is wanted for aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Police said officers responded to an apartment on South Beach Street where they found a man bleeding near the front door. Police said the victim was alert and conscious, though he was bleeding moderately from the left side of his face and shoulder. While the man was moved to a nearby parking lot for treatment, he told police uh, Grimes, who he had known for about two years, stabbed him with a sword. The man said Grimes, who recently became homeless, was upset due to having uh, to walk with his belongings. Well, that'll make you upset. I can kind of get that. Just before 9 p.m. on Monday, the two were sitting on the couch when the victim asked Grimes if he was going to give him his Xbox. Grimes said no before grabbing a samurai sword located inside the apartment and stabbing the victim two times in the face and one time each in the shoulder and knuckle. So it wasn't just a reaction. He was he was trying to kill him. Uh, the victim told police Grimes never said anything threatening towards him dur during that altercation. And afterwards, Grimes fled the apartment in an unknown direction. Neighbors told police they heard screams from coming inside the apartment. And when they went to see what happened, the victim said, Walter stabbed me while pointing towards that sword. Officers did find the samurai sword as well as blood covering the entrance of the apartment and the carpet. 
Uh, the victim got transported to an area hospital and was treated for two to three inch lacerations, which were non life threatening. So fortunately, he didn't drive the same arrow sword through his body. But I mean, a two inch laceration. He got four, is a big but he deal. got four, four different yeah. stab wounds. Right? He cut him up pretty good. Uh, Grimes was did previously have an arrest record for battery and criminal mischief in 2020. So. Uh, so settling his arguments with a samurai playing with his buddy. He's now homeless. The buddy asks if he's going to give him his Xbox. So I guess he's running around with an Xbox in his backpack and he gets pissed that that was even requested yep. and samurais to do. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just, uh, know it. That's what he was saying. Uh, so, uh, no. so many of these make so little uh, sense. Okay. No, no. Well, let's go to a state where everything always makes sense. Let's go to Pennsylvania, where a man was found guilty in the savage beating death of his girlfriend. Yeah. After a week-long trial, a guy by the name of Leroy Brom III, who's 33 years old, was convicted of first-degree murder, multiple counts of aggravated assault, simple assault, and recklessly endangering another person. This is all in connection with the death of a 21-year-old named Annabelle Meenan. The Chester County DA said Brom savagely beat Meenan on multiple occasions leading up to her December 4th of 2021 murder, and many of the brutal beatings were recorded on an in-home security video that Brom had installed in the mobile home trailer he shared with Meenan. The defendant unfathomably, brutally, and systematically beat his girlfriend to death during the course of the night, D.A. Christopher Sarabi said. Prosecutors allege that Brom grew jealous of a relationship Meenan had with a male friend that, the, that they had traveled uh, on an ocean cruise together with in 2021. So Brom, Meenan, and this third person uh, went on a cruise together, and Brom became jealous of him. He was done with Annabelle, choosing another man instead of himself. Deputy District Attorney Kathleen Wright told the jury he wanted to reassert his control over her. Prosecutors said that on the night of her death, Brom repeatedly beat her, stomped her on the head, dropped a sofa on her, and then laid down on that sofa and fell asleep. Jesus, She died a painful and brutal death, Wright said. East Vincent Township Police were called to the Spring City trailer on December 4, 2021, after a report of a medical emergency, Mina was found lying on the living room floor with wounds and extensive bruising to her face, chest, arms, and legs. The doctors told investigators that the victim had extensive trauma to her head and face and lacerations and bruising on the rest of her body, including arms, legs, torso, and pelvic area. Inside the home, they discovered blood stains in the kitchen walls. Uh, the oven's glass door had been shattered. A hole was put in the wall, and the, uh, the victim's uh, cell phone was damaged on the floor, according to police. Brahm's hand, finger, and elbow had bruising and swelling. Meenan was transported to a hospital where she died. The ME concluded that Meenan died of cardiac arrest due to cocaine and alcohol consumption, but the cardiac arrest was caused by the severe beatings she endured. Brahm's lawyer has argued that Meenan's death was not premeditated and that prosecutors couldn't be certain that her death wasn't a result of the cocaine use. But they lost, and now Brahm's gone to sleep on a different kind of pull-out couch. Jesus Christ, man. And I would, you know, I, that's a horrible, tragic story. I hope that guy gets a shit beat out of him every day for the rest of his life. But uh, I would love to know the history of um, if he had a, a, and I'm sure he did, a violent past relative to beatings and things like well, that. Well, they Usually, were, he was it, pretty young. He's 33, I think they said. And yeah, the, the he, two had been together. They weren't married, but they'd been together since high school. So yeah. it's another that, one of those. I doubt that was the first time. Yeah. It, that's, well, certainly wasn't the first time for her. He had yeah. been beating her for years. Right. And she had, you know, we talk about this all the time. She stayed in the relationship. And, yeah. Uh, Horrible. Awful. Uh, we'll lighten it up a little bit here. And we're going to go back to Florida. And a Florida couple is behind bars after police said they attempted an arm robbery at Cape Coral's. Lowe's hardware store on Sunday. And that's a awfully strange place to, you know, that's a rather large store to try to commit an armed robbery, but uh, they wanted to pull it off and they were um, dressed in cookie monster pajamas. 
<laughs> when you find <laughs> I, I knew that would get a reaction. That that's right, folks. You heard it. Uh, they robbed. <laughs> they attempted to rob that store on Sunday wearing matching Cookie Monster pajamas. Uh, the police department said that Charles Perez, 22, and Jelena Sepulveda, 19, went into a Lowe's hardware store. They were wearing those matching Cookie Monster pajama bottoms and tried to leave the store without paying for several items. When the pair were approached by the store's loss prevention team, the man revealed a gun in his waistband, made threats, and left the store. Police canvassed the area, but they were not able to catch the couple. The Cookie Monster bandits took off, right? On Monday, however, they were able to locate that couple and arrest them, and both remain in the Lee County Jail. Bonds have not been set as of yet, uh, but it was a relief to all Cape Coral residents that the Cookie Monster bandits were caught. They were found hiding in Oscar the Grouch's garbage pail, apparently. Yeah, and we'll post the picture of the lineup pictures of these two individuals. <laughs> and they look like they might would have Cookie Monster pajamas on. I mean, they just fit that profile. Uh, and you'll see what I mean when you see the picture. But they are now behind bars, and no one has to worry about uh, them any longer. <laughs> wow. How about that? We bring you all the news here. Well, yeah. um, the final chapter in a story, I don't think we, for whatever reason, I don't think we covered this story right when it first happened, but it's been out there in the news, and so many of you are probably aware of it. I'm talking about the theft of the Jackie Robinson statue in I saw uh, that. in Wichita, Kansas. Well, law enforcement in Wichita has announced the arrest of a suspect connected to the theft of the Jackie Robinson statue. The statue was cut from its base uh, leaving only bronze replicas of the legendary baseball player's cleats behind. So they they literally cut it from like the ankles up and uh, and stole that, but left the the uh, the feet still where the statue had originally stood. For those who may not recognize the name Jackie Robinson, I'll just give you a couple of uh, of things. But Jackie Robinson broke the major league baseball color barrier when he joined the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947 becoming the first black man to play in Major League Baseball. He was uh, from Pasadena, California. He became a four-sport athlete while he was at UCLA. He was drafted for service to World War II, um, but was court-martialed for refusing to sit at the back of a segregated Army bus. Robinson was eventually honorably discharged. After the war, he signed a contract with the Kansas City Monarchs of what was known as the Negro League. While playing for the Monarchs, Robinson caught the eye of a guy by the name of Branch Ritchie, who was the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Ricky and some other GMs in baseball and some other owners wanted to enable black players to play in the league, and he had been scouting Robinson as a possible first choice. The Dodgers signed Robinson in 1947, and in short order, he became one of the greatest players in the game. He was a six-time All-Star. He won the National League MVP award. He won the 1955 World Series. But Robinson's contributions went way beyond what he did on the baseball field as he really became the, the guy who opened up all of American sports uh, for black men uh, and for black women for that matter. So he was the first to, uh, uh, to be able to, uh, to cross over. So in 1997, Major League Baseball retired his uniform number 42, meaning no player on any other team in the league can ever wear number 42 again. So retire the number across the entire league. He was the first professional athlete in any sport to have his number retired across the league. On April 15th of 2004, Major League Baseball created Jackie Robinson Day. On that day of 2004 and every April 15th since 2004, every single player and manager and coach in the league wears the number 42. It's a pretty cool thing. It's a pretty amazing tribute. I'm a huge fan of baseball, and and so I was shocked to learn that someone would steal Robinson's statue. The statue was stolen from a public park and was later found dismantled and burned. Um, I was especially upset because it certainly looked like this was a hate crime or could have been a hate crime. On Tuesday, Wichita police said a man by the name of Ricky Aldretti, who's 45, had been taken into custody originally in an unrelated case 
but that they were now charging him in the theft of the Jackie Robinson statue. Aldredi has a criminal record that includes burglary and theft, but it remains unclear exactly how investigators came to the conclusion that Aldredi was responsible for the, for the uh, Robinson theft. The police did say that evidence they've gathered does not suggest that the crime was hate motivated. The suspect instead seemed to be intended on uh, intent on selling the metal, uh, which was estimated to have a value of seventy five thousand dollars. That statue, of the bronze. Oh yeah, there's was no worth seventy five thousand dollars. So, well, that was the first thing I thought was uh, it was scrapped to be scrapped. You know, someone was going to take it and scrap it. Well, here's how I guess all kind of ends well on this. The uh, the foundation, the nonprofit which is called uh, the 42 Foundation, uh, was able to raise more than $300,000 in donations following the theft of the statue. The city has uh, already stepped up to say that they will replace the statue on the city's budget. And so uh, they're going to have $300,000 to spend on uh, that charity in that community uh, on behalf of his name. So in the end, the statue gets replaced and the foundation ends up with a bunch more uh, more money. Uh, Aldredi was uh, jailed on a $150,000 bond on felony theft, aggravated criminal damage to property, identity theft, and making false information. So Jeez. it all ended well for the Jackie Robinson statue. It's a mile-high crime for Friday, and (laughs) I've got a good one today, a good one. Look, they're all good, but this one's really good. Uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection canine is being praised for sniffing out something dangerous in a passenger's luggage, and it's not guns or drugs. Mm -hmm. Four mummified monkeys were seized from a bag belonging to a passenger returning to the U.S. from a trip to the Democratic Republic of Congo. The incident occurred on January 8th of 2024 at Boston's Logan International Airport. Agents said a customs dog named Buddy alerted his handler to a piece of luggage during a screening of a Delta flight. Uh, Customs said the passenger claimed the bag only held dried fish. So the luggage was x-rayed and it appeared to hold dry fish. Still, uh, upon a physical inspection, the officer identified the dead and dehydrated bodies of four monkeys. Raw or uh, minimally processed meat from wild animals, which is referred to as bush meat, is banned in the U.S. because it could pose a disease risk. I wish Woody were here right now because he'd probably say, oh, bush meat is good. Oh <laughs> you know he would. No, 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 I don't think he'd go there on that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, uh, raw, uh, Maybe so, he had some bush meat last yeah, night. That's yeah. why he's not here. Yeah, we call that jerky. <laughs> so the potential dangers posed by bringing bush meat into the United States are real. That from the area port director. Bush meat can carry germs that can cause illness, including Ebola. The work of CBP's canine unit and uh, agricultural uh, specialists were vital in preventing this potential danger from entering the U.S. Customs agents contacted the CDC, which requested that the luggage be seized and that Delta Airlines either destroy or return the bags to France. So it was a big deal. Nearly nine pounds of the bush meat were seized and marked for destruction. That's that's a lot. Uh, a customs spokesman said no charges were filed against the passenger. The traveler said he bought the brought the monkeys into the U.S. for his own consumption. So he planned to eat this. He planned to eat them, and and probably you know in his culture maybe that's a common thing. I've never had monkey. Um, what do you, what do you have? What he's had? Monkey. Co- I, I would no, almost bet. No, we'll There's check with Woody. See if no, he's had. He He'll say I eat monkey no, all the time. I hunt monkey. So anyway, we we do want to thank uh, listener Lynn Anderson for pointing out this article as a good mile high crime segment. Thank you very much, Miss Lynn. So that's your mile high crime for today. Bush meat. Bush meat. Yep. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. 
The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts to spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut, soy, vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. It's invigorating like fresh-cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pre-game grill. And common like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV, and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S., They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limit time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Shop early, save big, all month long during Black Friday buildup at Lowe's. Right now, get select pre-lit artificial Christmas trees starting at just $59.98. Don't wait to save. Shop these deals today, in-store or online. Because Lowe's knows deals. Discount taken at time of purchase, while supplies last. Selection varies by location. Wow, well, yeah, nine pounds of monkey. Tastes like chicken. Uh, don't know about that one. How about some <laughs> banjos, Jim? Banjos. Seems like we're getting banjos a little early today. We are. We're saving kinky for last. Okay. Where else but Florida? If you're a handicapped individual, there can be few things more frustrating than finding a handicapped parking space that has been taken by someone without a handicap sticker necessary to park there. Right. For 39-year-old, I don't know why 39-year-old would have a handicap sticker necessarily, but the 39-year-old Nicholas Taylor of the Villages in Florida, it became really frustrating. So frustrated was Taylor that he allegedly decided to block in the vehicle that was illegally parked in the handicap spot. But it was Taylor himself who was arrested for causing a scene when police arrived. Undeterred, Nicholas Taylor then called 911 to complain about the cops that had arrested him. Hmm. Taylor's facing charges of disorderly intoxication and misuse of 911 after he caused a scene at a Wawa. I didn't know we had Wawa's now down in Florida, but I guess we do. Yep. I thought this was a Wawa's was a uh, Maryland, Pennsylvania thing. But uh, at a Wawa gas station on Highway 27 in Lady Lake, Florida. The Lady Lake Police Department said that Taylor called 911 after he noticed a vehicle was parked in a handicapped space at the gas station, despite not having a handicapped permit. Taylor then allegedly marched into the store and caused the scene inside. Police said Taylor was disrupting the flow of business because a car was illegally parked in the handicapped spot. He also allegedly threatened to fight the person who parked in the spot. When the driver of the vehicle attempted to leave, Taylor stood behind the car until police arrived. While there, Taylor allegedly continued to threaten to fight with the driver, police Mm. said. During an investigation, Taylor was allegedly unsteady on his feet and smelled of alcohol. The responding officers warned Taylor if he were to get behind the wheel of his car, they were going to arrest him. Instead, they suggested he find a ride home. 
But Taylor argued with the officer's um, police claim and demanded a police sergeant be sent to the scene. Despite the officer saying he was the sergeant on duty, Taylor ignored him and dialed 911 to complain about the officers who responded to the Wawa to deal with him. Ultimately, Taylor was arrested and then taken to Lake County Jail. He was released after posting $1,500 bond. All of this leaves me with a question. If you're only 39 and in good enough shape to pick a fight with a driver, on what basis do you even have a handicapped parking? Oh, come on. It could be a lot of reasons. You could be a war veteran that got shot and, it, you know, you have to walk long distances and it hurts. I know someone like that. And that you're um, starting fights with people could, at the drop of it. Well, I mean, he might, I don't think he really wanted to necessarily fight him. I He's think probably he, bitching at him and, and you know. Okay. I think here, I would get here's, frustrated here's if, the I, if I was handicapped. Here's the tell. His address is the villages, right? Uh-huh. We know what the villages is. No. Oh, it's a huge, biggest in the country retirement community. Okay. Okay. So he's probably got his mother's car. He's 39 years old. He's probably got his mother's the car. Don't have nothing to do with he's it. probably got his mother's car. <laughs> and he's pissed that he can't get the, the parking spot up front that he doesn't need anyway because he's 39 I mean, and that ready is to fight possible? with the guy. Or he could be handicapped. The villages, those are my, I, I want proof that this guy's handicapped. <laughs> Because he's he just, 39 he just, does not mean he's not a handicap. You have all kinds of problems. It's 39 and ready to fight. Might have a bowl. Ready to fight a guy over a well, parking place. No, give me some banjos for this. <laughs> <idiot>. <laughs> all right, here's some banjos. Got to be at least your age, right? <laughs> Even as sad a shape as I'm in at this point, I couldn't qualify for one of those stickers. All right. Well, look. Woody's not here, but we're going to do our best with a little. I'm going to have to be double kinky today. Use your, use your Woody to voice. Cover. Tell, tell it in Woody voice. Oh, yeah. Like so you, can mu- you can mumble a couple of words. And- <laughs> Let's get giggy. All right. <laughs> enough of me trying to do what his voice i can't do it all right there is a unique prank and it's taking place all over an oklahoma city suburb and we can't get enough of it hmm. an oklahoma city suburb is now a victim of a drone sex toy prank happening all across the city hmm. that's right adult toys are being placed on rooftops traffic lights <laughs> Sorry. all Sorry. over more Oklahoma. That's the name of the the uh, the city. And right. crews have been busy trying to remove all of these sex toys. The Moore Police Department is aware the toys are being placed in public. They say the toys are being placed in these locations by drones. So police say they started receiving reports and sightings uh, last Wednesday, uh, and they just kept coming. They were sex to- there were sex toys on top of buildings, on top of a stoplight, and even more. Reactions seem to vary across town. Some residents are sick of it. Others seem to be getting a little bit of joy out of it. One uh, commenter wrote on a Facebook page, whoever did this, I want to be best friends with you. <laughs> Others have said this gives them something to do. They say they've been driving around trying to find more of them, almost like a scavenger hunt. I can't blame them. I'm not very familiar with more Oklahoma, but I can imagine there's probably not a whole lot to do. Thus, this is taking off and giving the community an activity to participate in together. Uh, That from other people on Facebook. Officers are currently investigating the prank. They are yet to decide if the guilty party will face charges or fines. I would almost bet they will. The Moore Police Department said in a statement that they do not condone the actions of the individuals and find the pranks inappropriate. Uh, Did Footloose take place in Oklahoma? I think it did. I don't know. Well, that makes sense then. They'd be doing pranks. Because there's just not a lot to do. Well, look. You either go Footloose or you put out sex toys. That is going to be become a copycat deal on TikTok. I mean, that's just... Oh, know. yeah. The only thing is, I mean, I know from Christmas shopping, that shit's expensive. Yeah. I mean, how ma- what, what, what kind of, of sex toys are they dropping uh, everywhere? Uh, dildos, I guess. 
I, I mean, don't know. I mean, I, I mean, stuff that you, I guess, automatically recognize as a, as a sex toy. Unless maybe there's like a resell. There's like a, a, a thrift shop for maybe they went to the uh, oh, uh, to a thrift shop and bought uh, uh, and bought used sex toys oh my because. God. Uh, but that's but disgusting. man, that what a great one. Yeah, um, that's a uh, and. Look, people are having fun with it, but putting putting them on top of stoplights. How about that? Yeah, but there could be some really funny places to. to I mean, stop, yeah. stoplights a good one for sure. Well, that's pretty kinky to put them that's, sex toys all over the place, and that is your kinky crime. Especially kinky in Friday, Oklahoma. Yes. So, all right, we we, we probably, struggled through the episode, Mike, but we made it. And we probably, hopefully we entertained you folks. Probably better put out an EPB. Uh, a bolo for beep, beep, uh, beep, beep. for Woody. Um, we'll let you know on social media once we uh, are able to declare him li- amongst the living. Yeah. Uh, don't exactly know what happened last night, but we'll uh, we'll find him one way or another. Thanks for tolerating us, folks. <laughs> Is that how you sum it up? Tolerating. I think they enjoyed thanks for themselves. tolerating me. Uh, y'all enjoyed yourselves. Yeah, thanks for tolerating Mike. Thanks for tolerating Mike. That's right. Until next time, I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Mike Agavino. And for Woody Everton, we are Real Life, Real Crime Daily. Peace. Maybe I should have done peace. You should have done peace. Let's do it again. For Real Life, Real Crime Daily, peace. Peace. And then say your eggs. There you go. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. You've got questions? O'Reilly Auto Parts has answers. Need a pro you can trust? We've got that too. No matter what you need, our professional parts people have the training and expertise to help you do things right. Deep automotive knowledge. Just one part that makes O'Reilly stand apart. The professional parts people. Oh, 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 O'Reilly.